right, so listen, we're gonna go into a, a brief, a brief class, but it, it is very needed just to just for an adjustment of our spirits. Uh, that way we can look at ourselves in the mirror and realize what we need to do to perfect ourselves and to continue to perfect ourselves. That's what this truth is all about. It's just perfecting yourself as time goes on, analyzing things, fixing it, then reanalyzing yourself, looking in the mirror and making adjustments as you go on through repentance and using your grace that the Lord has given you uh, properly. Okay? So we're going to start in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Okay? The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. So, Paul says, I'm writing to you that you can walk worthy. And I'm telling you that you need to walk worthy of the vocation for which you were called. Look up the definition of uh, vocation. Give me that definition of vocation. What does vocation mean? Okay, vocation. A strong feeling of suitability for a particular career or occupation. For a particular career or occupation. You know what our career and occupation is? Our career and occupation is to serve the Lord. We're servants of God. Okay, let's get the scripture real quick. Um, Isaiah 40... What is it? 49 and 6? 49. Yeah. Isaiah 49 and 6. Real quick. Real quick like. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. What is the job of the servant? It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. To do what? To raise up the tribes of Jacob. And what else? And to restore the preserved of Israel. Right. So our people have been lost, oppressed. Uh, their, their identities have been taken from them. They don't know who they are. They don't know how to properly serve God. They've been duped into following Christianity. Right. So now the job, our job is to do what? Bring them back into who they are. Bring them back into what they must do to please God. What they must do in order to be saved. That's the job. That's the job. To restore the preserve of Israel. So you know what comes into that job? Different uh, forms of ministry comes into that job. For instance, brothers come into the truth. They come into these doors. They're going to need fringes. They don't know how to put fringes on. Sisters can put fringes on their clothes. Okay? Brothers, uh... Sisters coming to this truth, they don't know how to conduct themselves as an Israelite woman. So what happens? The sisters come in and the elder sisters, the senior sisters, they deal with them and they teach the younger sisters how to be built up. How to follow, how to be good wives, how to be good mothers. Okay? But on the brother's side, even some sisters can help out in these offices. Just even simple as sharing a post on social media is doing the work. Okay, doing the work. So back to this definition of vocation. It says a strong feeling of suitability for a particular career or occupation. Okay, a person's employment or main occupation. So understand, God didn't call us in this truth to put the work in this truth second, third, or fourth. Right? He called He, he called us in this truth to put our righteousness, uh, uh, our... Uh, walk with God first. Give me that in um, Matthew 6. Matthew 6 is down at the bottom. Matthew 6 down to the bottom. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What verse is that? 33. 33. Um, yeah, 33. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, start up at verse 31. Verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Your only worry shouldn't be, what, what am I going to eat? You're just worried about what you're going to eat. 
Come on. Or what shall we drink? What am I going to drink? Where, where's my food and water going to come from? Come on. Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? How am I going to get money to buy clothes? How am I going to afford to clothe myself? Come on. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. See, the heathens, all they worried about is just surviving, just food, water, and clothes. That's their main concern in life. Come on. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. See, your Father that's in heaven, he knows you need clothes. He knows you need food. He knows you need water. He knows all these things. Come on. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. You see that? Seek first the kingdom of God. Now, we know the kingdom cometh not by observation. You, the kingdom ain't coming by us just folding our hands and saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> it ain't coming that way. We got to do some work. We got to get busy. Come on. And his righteousness. And his righteousness. That's the keeping of God's law, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead. And all these things shall be added unto you. And guess what? When you seek God first, when you truly put God first and his law, statutes, and commandments and the labors and works, and you walk worthy of the vocation, meaning the occupation that God gave you, guess what? You ain't going to have to worry about where your food coming from. You ain't going to have to worry about going without water. You ain't going to have to worry about going without clothes. Because the Most High is going to make sure all of those things are provided for you. You wonder why certain brothers have uh, trouble finding a job? Here it is. We have, we, we've had brothers. We tell brother, bro, go get a job. Get a job. Brother, brother, get a job. He loses a job. Get another job. He loses a job. What, something, something's wrong with the brother. <laughs> he ain't examined himself yet. He ain't got himself right yet. So the Lord is closing doors. But whenever you begin to seek God's kingdom first and you're diligent in doing the things that the Lord called you to do, guess what's going to happen? All of these things are going to be provided unto you. Read that bottom part of that scripture again. And all these things shall be added unto you. Once you put God first, all of these things that you seek will be added unto you. Come on. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. Don't think, don't think about tomorrow. Come on. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Come on. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What that mean? That means that you have enough evil in your life that you got to purge out and repent of and things that you got to examine and overcome today before you can even think about what's going on tomorrow. You got to worry about getting yourself right today, overcoming your sins today. Okay, now let's go back to Ephesians. So now we got some understanding. Verse one. Okay, Ephesians four and one. The book of Ephesians, chapter four, verse one. Mm -hmm. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. So we understand our vocation is to do what? Raise up the tribes of Israel to restore the preserved of Israel, to restore the decayed estate of our people. To restore the minds of our people, their nationality, their identity, their walk with God. Bring them back to the Lord, right? But to walk worthy of that vocation is seeking the kingdom first, putting God first, putting this work first. And then everything else that you desire in life, as far as your basic necessities, you'll be added unto you. They'll be added unto you. Come on. Verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness. That's being humble. Humility. Come on. With long suffering. Mm -hmm. Forbearing one another in love. You know why? Because sometimes you get around people that you just can't stand. Some brothers, some sisters, they just get on your nerves. But you got to be long suffering and forbearing one another in love. You got to deal with it. <laughs> you got to put up with that brother that get on your nerves. You know why? Because you get on God's nerves with all the sin you used to do. <laughs> and he forbeared you and allowed you to come into this truth. So who are you to to, to deny and, and distance yourself from a brother or a sister just because they got a couple of things, they do a couple of things that get on your nerves? The hell is this? Read on. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So guess what? It takes two people to make peace. So you got two people, right? All it takes is one person to disrupt that peace. 
All it takes is one person to disrupt that peace. A person that's contentious, a person that strives over little things, disrupt the peace. So everybody got to be on the same page in seeking peace. If I'm about peace and also Benai is about peace and we have an issue, guess what we're going to do? We're going to look for the we're going to look for the solution. We ain't going to be pointing fingers at one another. We're going to say, "Hey, look, you know, it, it ain't even that serious to argue over or disrupt the peace over. Dab it up and let's keep it moving." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whatever. But sometimes on the sister side, oh man, it ain't that easy. Sister's got to be right. Sister got to be right. And her point got to be proven. <laughs> okay. Look up that word endeavoring. Give me endeavoring. E-N-D-E-A. There we go. To uh, try hard to do something uh, or achieve something. An attempt to achieve a goal. So it says to try hard. Right? A lot of times, so to try hard to keep the unity, to try hard to keep the peace, that takes effort. That's a vent, <laughs> what does I say? Venture. That's a venture. Okay? That's something that you have to work at doing. You can't just uh, let your emotions take over. No, you got to fight against your own emotions. Your emotions might, tell, might be to tell somebody to shut the hell up. <laughs> and go off on somebody or distance yourself from somebody or cut somebody off. But a lot of times that's not the right approach. You got to be meek, humble, patient, long suffering. And when your brother over, when your sister over and re and, uh, um, and bring the peace back into the situation. Come on. There is one body and one spirit. Mm -hmm. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Read on. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, mm -hmm. one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Read. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. You know what that's going into? A lot of times, brothers think that God is dealing with everybody the same. Sisters think that God is dealing with every sister the same. God ain't dealing with every sister the same. God ain't dealing with every brother the same. This is why you have some men who are um, better teachers than others. This is why you have some sisters who cook better than others. Everybody ain't on the same level. But you're supposed to look at that brother and say, hey, I want to be able to teach like that brother. Let me pattern my teaching after him. Some people don't do that. Some brothers say, look at him. Look at the way he teach. I got to find something evil about him so I can expose him, so I can become the better teacher. Nobody will listen to him if they find out he's a nigga. <laughs> That's what people do. Let me dig up some dirt. Right? Sister, instead of saying, hey, sis, can you show me how you made that unleavened bread like that? The sister will say, uh, no, my unleavened bread is okay. Ain't nothing wrong with my bread. My bread is good. But prideful as hell knowing that, listen, when the brothers ate your bread, when we broke bread, nobody said, mm, 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 mm. damn, who made the bread? Jesus was in the kitchen. If you didn't hear that, listen, sister, your bread wasn't all that, okay? But if you hear, mm, ooh, wait, who made that bread? You did your thing. Then you know, okay, yeah, yeah, that was some good bread. <laughs> That's just a tip. That's just a tip. If, you, if it's real silent. When you when the brothers eat your bread, just know it was probably below average. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I love y'all all. I love y'all all the same. <laughs> but it says what? Read verse seven again. Verse seven. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So what's grace? Mercy. Some of us have done more evil than others in the world, but God still showed them mercy to come into this truth. Some brothers come into this truth and do evil. And the Lord, the Lord still dealing with them. Some brothers will come in here and do some evil and the Lord reject them and bug, bug their mind out. Now they're gone back in the world. The Lord ain't dealing with everybody the same. The Lord has more mercy for some people. Many brothers committed adultery and was put to death on the spot. But the Lord allowed King David to be forgiven, to repent. 
That mercy wasn't extended to everybody. The Lord, the, everybody has a different measure of mercy and a different measure of grace. So what another brother got away with and he did, that don't mean you could go do that. That don't mean you can go do that. Because you go do that and you might fall out the truth for good. That brother did it and it was for him to learn from that mistake so that he may grow from it. You, it may be your demise. <laughs> that's just, some, that's just some, some wisdom Read on Verse 8 Wherefore he saith When he ascended up on high He led captivity captive And gave gifts unto men Come on Now that he ascended What is it but that he also descended first Into the lower parts of the earth Come on Verse 10 he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. One into Christ. Go ahead. And he gave some apostles. He made some brothers to be apostles. And some prophets. Some brothers are prophets. And some evangelists. Some brothers were sent to evangelize. And some pastors and teachers. So everybody is not meant to be on the same level as far as the ministry is going is concerned. Some brothers have this ministry. Some brothers do this. Some brothers are prophets. Some brothers deal with evangelizing. Some brothers deal with um, uh, pastoring. Okay. Everybody got their own role to play. Their own lane. Go ahead. For the perfecting of the saints. And it's all to do what? For the perfecting of the saints. So everybody plays their part and plays their role for the perfecting of the saints. That's what it's about. Go ahead. For the work of the ministry, mm -hmm. for the edifying of the body of Christ. You see that? Everybody has their own. So what happens when people don't stay in their own lane? Traffic. <laughs> you get traffic. You get pileups. You get uh, uh, accidents and wrecks. And guess what that translates to in this chapter? Disturbing the peace. The peace is now disrupted because now you don't want to stay in your lane. You want to step on this brother's toes and try to do what he's doing because you because you saw how people honored him and, and clapped for him and praised him for things that he did. You want that praise. You want that honor. You know, it's not your thing. That's not your office. Fall back and you will get glory and honor when it's your turn. Go ahead. Verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith mm -hmm. and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's the goal. We are supposed to measure up to the stature of Christ. Now, that is a long measuring stick to measure up to. That's a heavy thing to measure up to that level. But that's where your grace, your studying you're applying those scriptures, you're going through correction, and you're fixing yourself and looking in the mirror, that's where, that, that's where that's going to lead you. Taking this truth seriously, that's where it's going to lead you. It's going to lead you to, the, to perfection. It's going to lead you to the measure of Christ. Go ahead. Verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Right, because guess what? When you go on YouTube, you're going to see all matter of jacked up doctrines. Anything, anything you wanna you wanna follow, guess what? Somebody out there teaching it. <laughs> some some bugged out person is out there teaching it. But we can't be as children tossed to and fro. You know what you could tell a child? You could tell a child that two plus two equals six. And guess what? They're gonna believe you. They're gonna believe you. You could tell a child, yes, yeah, Santa Claus is coming down the chimney, and you don't even have a damn chimney. And they'll believe you. <laughs> okay? So as children are, are easily deceived and believe anything that they're told, we can't be like that when it comes to our faith in God and the way that we move. You have to be strong in the things that you've been taught. You have to be sure in the doctrine that you've been taught. Because you got brothers and sisters that left up out of here and now they believe some, they're getting baptized in swimming pools. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> Go ahead. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So these doctrines are lying in wait to deceive. They're just created to deceive you. Go ahead. But speaking the truth in love, 
may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Go ahead. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, mm -hmm. maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. You see that? Meaning the entire body goes together perfectly. And each body part fits, fits in its rightful place. You can't take the arm and try to stick it in the leg jock, uh, socket and then walk around. You go. You gonna be looking like a, a damn Doctor Kvorkian uh, uh, <laughs> a creation. <laughs> you were looking jacked up. So the body. Read that verse again. Verse sixteen. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, mm -hmm. according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. So the effectual working in every part is every part of the body is fulfilling its purpose. Every part of the body is doing what it's supposed to do. The eyes are seeing, the ears are hearing, the mouth is speaking, the nose is smelling, the hands are grabbing things, the feet are, are joined to the ankle, which is joined to the legs, and you'll be able to walk. But what is this going to? This goes into also the different ministries in the pipe, in the body. Some people are meant to do videos and edit videos. Some people are meant to be on social media. Some people are meant to be in the kitchen cooking and serving food on the feast days. Okay? Brothers that can't cook, they don't touch the food. <laughs> people who can't edit videos, they don't touch the videos until they built themselves up to be able to edit videos. Everybody got to stay in their own role. Everybody can't sit up here and teach. Some brothers don't study a lick. They get up here and start sounding like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> uh, uh, let me let me tell you about a wabbit. <laughs> get so dumb. <laughs> Read on. Make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So when everybody's on the same page and, and in their lane and doing what they're supposed to do, guess what's going to happen? The body's going to increase. The body's going to grow. Go ahead. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, mm -hmm. in the vanity of their minds. In the vanity of their minds. Look at the people that's in the world. That's what the Gentiles are talking about, the people that's in the world. Bugged out. They walk after the vanity of their mind. They, check, they follow after some of the dumbest. You know how dumb it is? To work hard all week and then blow all your money in the club. It's people that do that. They work hard all week, get their little check. Then they go to the club and be buying bottles and buying drugs and then trying to impress some women. And then that you know what? They broke. <laughs> the next day they broke and then they got to go do it all over again next week. That's some people. That's some people. It's people that are... They a okay with working a dead end job. They fine. They have no aspirations, no goal. That's vanity. <laughs> That's bugged out. Some people, you got grown ass people dressing up on Halloween. <laughs> you got grown. You got grown. You got people taking their kids to the mall to sit on a white stranger's lap with a beard. Ho, 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 little boy. What do you want for Christmas? He ain't getting you nothing. <laughs> he ain't got no money. That's why he at the mall dressed up like that. <laughs> but it's the vanity of our people's mind. Guess what? You know what another vanity is? People think that bunnies lay eggs. That's, that's a bugged out doctrine. That's bugged out. What the hell does bunnies laying eggs have to do with the resurrection of Christ? Nothing. It's paganism. It's foolishness. Anyway, I could go in all day on the vanities of the minds of our people. But don't walk like after them. We don't follow after them. Go ahead. Verse 18. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. You see that? So God God gave them blindness. You could look at your look at your family. Some of y'all you gotta do is look at your mama. 
She bugged. <laughs> Look at your daddy. He bugged. They crazy. They out of there. And it's because and you go to them with the scriptures and you try to show them these things and you read the most simplest scriptures and they just don't agree with it and they can't accept it and they won't follow it. And guess what that means? They're blind. Their understanding has been darkened. Read it again. Having the understanding darkened. Uh-huh. They can't understand. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. The ignorance that is in them has separated them from God. Because they ignorant. <laughs> Go ahead. Because of the blindness of their heart. Because their minds are blind to the truth. Go ahead. Verse 19. Who being past feeling, having given themselves over unto lasciviousness. Because of their feelings. Because of how they feel, they do whatever they feel according to their lust. That's what lasciviousness is, is lust. They do what they feel. They don't, they don't have any type of discipline to do what God told them to do. You know what they do? Oh, you know what? Christmas feels good. So I'm going to do Christmas. You know what feels good? Valentine's Day feels good. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to whore myself out on Valentine's Day. He's my Valentine. <laughs> it feels good. Going to the club, drinking and dancing with girls and doing all this nonsense and whore, oh, being a whore mugger feels good. So I'm going to do that. And now, and now I wonder why you getting persecuted in child support because you was careless with your seed. But it felt good. You did according to your lust. You did how, according to you how you felt, your feelings. We can't move like them. The Bible's telling you don't move after. The, they moved upon feelings. Now what are we supposed to move after? Alizar, what are we supposed to move after now? Righteousness. Righteousness. What else? Give me another word, uh, Chris. Let me help you out. It starts with a W. Crickets, 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 crickets. Play the, play the cricket sound in the video. Uh, Khalil. Wisdom. Wisdom. Now we're supposed to move according to wisdom. Because what does wisdom do? Wisdom says, if I do this, this is going to happen. If I go to the club and have sex with a stranger, an STD might happen. I might get some bumps and mumps. <laughs> right? If... If I keep God's commandments, I, I get the kingdom of heaven. That's wisdom. If I don't go to the fornicate, I can't. I won't get an STD. That's wisdom, <laughs> right? So we're supposed to operate and move according to wisdom. Go ahead. To work all uncleanness with greediness. Mm -hmm. We see that greediness. That's in the world. Go ahead. But ye have not so learned Christ because they haven't learned Christ. They don't understand what it means to follow Christ. But guess what? Most of the people that's in that club, most of the people that's doing Christmas, most of the people that's doing uh, um, Easter, guess what they are? They call themselves Christians. They call themselves Christians. But they have not so learned Christ. They haven't learned what to me to follow Christ really means. Go ahead. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus... Mm -hmm. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Put away that old man and his conversation. You don't speak like you used to. Like um, soldier, the, one of the soldiers was telling me about how he ran into one of the brother's co-workers. And the co-worker told him, was like, hey man, ever since he started hanging around y'all, he done changed, man. He's not even the same dude anymore. He don't even talk the same. He changed. That's That's repentance. It's supposed to show forth in the people around you. They're supposed to see that your conversation is different. The way you dress is different. The way you act is different. Different. Go ahead. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Mm -hmm. So all of you, the corrupt conversation that you had prior to coming to this truth, that was according to the deceitful lusts, you don't move like that no more. You don't speak like that no more. Of your Come mind. on and do what? And be renewed in the spirit. Of your mind. So when you come into this truth and you give yourself over to Christ, your mind has to be renewed. The way you think has to change. You can't come in this truth and think the same way you did before you was in this truth. Because you thought according to the world. You thought according to lust and lasciviousness. You thought according to how you feel. Right, sisters? <laughs> but I don't feel. See, but I don't think. And eh, nah, we ain't dealing with feelings and all that type of stuff. 
and emotions. Go ahead. Verse 24. Yep. And that he put on the new man. You put on the new man or the new woman. You are you're a new creature in Christ. Come on. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Right. Because that new person is in true holiness. That new person, you would never, you would never take your kids to the mall to sit on a white man's lap and, and take pictures and say, Merry Christmas. <laughs> you would never do that now. <laughs> You would never think to disrespect your husband. You would never think to uh, uh, go out in the club. But guess what? Many sisters and brothers come into this truth, and then they turn back unto that. They walk straight with God for a year, two years, three years, four years, some, some ten years. And then they go back to their filth. They go back to the ways of the world. They go back to doing what they feel. Come on. Verse 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth. With his neighbor. Right. And guess what? When you go into the world, you can't believe nothing nobody says because all of them is liars. It's nothing but a bunch of liars in the world. So when you come into this truth, yeah, you got to put away that lying spirit. Because guess what? The world taught you that, oh, it's okay to lie. A little white lie here, a little white lie there, a little deception, a little omitting of the truth. Ain't nothing wrong with that. No, 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 no. Put away lying. Put away deception. Put away uh, omitting truth and omitting facts. That's misleading someone that's lying. Come on. For we are members one of another. Read. Verse 26. Be ye angry and sin not. There's nothing wrong with being angry. Things are going to upset you. But that doesn't mean that you lose wisdom and you act on that anger and you say something of, uh, offensive or foolish or, or you do something that will uh, have ramifications or repercussions or that will offend someone or upset someone else. You have to control that anger. You have to control it. Come on. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That means don't the, the sun is the wisdom. Don't let wisdom depart just because you're angry. A lot of sisters battle with that thing. They get they get over emotional and they, they, they lose all sight of themselves. They say something crazy. Sister, sister. Uh, uh, call the husband, tell him something. The husband say, okay, well, this is what we're going to do. Sister don't like it. What the hell? The hell is going on? The wisdom has left the building because you got upset? No, 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 no. Okay, well, whenever you back in the spirit, let me know. Uh, what I said, we still going to do that. <laughs> okay, I'm mad you is. And, but, then, but we'll deal with that we'll, we'll deal with that spirit that overcame you in, in, in a little bit <laughs> we'll see you later anyway go ahead verse 27 neither give place to the devil because that's what it is when you get angry and when you get emotional that gives a chance for Satan to come in and take over once you come out of the spirit because guess what what are the, what are the fruits of the spirit love, joy, peace, happiness all of these things right Whenever you're not operating in joy, love, peace, you know, you operate in anger, hatred, uh, disorderness, right? Satan thrives in them, in, them, in them emotions. Satan thrives when you're angry. Oh, man, he can twist and turn you about how he want. When you when you, when you out of order, he can twist and turn you about how he wants. You gave him control. It says, neither give place to the devil. Read on. Verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. You see that? So these are all things of repentance. These are all things of repentance. Let him that stole steal no more. Come on. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good. You see that? If you used to, if you used to be a thief in the world, now it's time to get a job. <laughs> get to work. Go ahead. That he may have to give to him that needeth. You see that? That he may have to give to him that needeth, so that you can be a uh, help to your brethren. Go ahead. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Right. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Right. Your communication is supposed to be edifying to those people who are listening to you. It should not be corrupt communication that will push someone into sin or cause someone to be angry and upset at you, or disrupting the peace. This corrupt communication can be gossip. It can be slander. Okay? It could be uh, flat-out disrespect. 
It can be a few things, but we have to mind our conversation. Come on. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Read. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. You know what that clamor goes into? That, 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 that Really, that clamor deals with women. But we've had some clamorous brothers up in here before. <laughs> brothers, clamor. Look up clamor. Clamor. There you go. It says a loud, confused noise, especially that of people shouting, yelling. You're mad. So now you got, now it's clamor and all that. See? Mm -mm. Can't do that. You have to be able to maintain your composure, relax, and get your point across with uh, wise words. Okay? Shout loudly and, uh, what's that word? How do you say that? Insistently. Insistently. Man. Read that verse again, verse 31. Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. See, these spirits got to be... We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth